بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم so the third method is dividend growth dividend grow at different rate if you remember the first method was different dividend yield method it means there is a whatever return we receive now we will receive in the future as well second method was dividend yield plus growth it means you will receive the current rate as well as there is a growth in the dividend but the growth rate was constant in this method there is a growth in the dividend but the growth is different at different rate in different year dividend grew at different rate for example in from year one to year two year from we are at year one to year five the growth in the dividend is for example five percentage after that it may go for seven percentage and so on so it means there is a there is a growth in the dividend but growth is at different rate right first method no growth second method growth but constant and the third method growth but growth is also variable right so if this is so how we can find out the cost of equity basically this method is based on the time value of money right or this method in this method <clears throat> we use the time value of money in order to calculate the cost of equity if you remember from financial management if you remember from financial management that how to calculate the how to calculate the value uh, of share how to calculate the value of the preference share how to calculate the value of the debt if you remember we use time value of money right so the same thing in this case in order to find out the cost of equity again we use from the time value of money itself from the present value formula what is the formula this is the formula p not as equal to d1 divided by 1 plus k e in the power of 1 plus in the power of 2 plus 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 d in minus 1 plus uh, divided by 1 plus k in the power of minus 1 and finally dn divided by 1 plus k e in the power of n minus 1 divided by k e minus g this was the formula that we can use it this formula is basically based on the assumption that if we want to find out the value of a security the value of the security especially the value of equity is equal to the present value of all dividend that we receive this is the present value of all dividend that we receive as well as the present value of the amount that we sell at the end present value of the price of the share that we sell at the end that is why it is mentioned here see an important point to be noted is that the current market price of the equity share is equal to the present value of the future dividend plus the present value of the market price market share okay market price of the share at the end of the period when this share is also sold out this method is basically based on this assumption that the present value it means this one itself just a minute it means the present value or the current market price the current market price is equal to the present value of all dividends plus the present value of the price that we sell at the end right so we made it basically based on that formula right so that is why p naught is equal to d1 divided by this d2 d3 d4 bluff and at the end uh, d n minus one it means just one uh, item before dn and the last one is of course dn divided by g k e minus g and into one plus k e in the power of n minus one right so what is the purpose of this formula or how we can basically how this formula can find out cost of equity in this formula it assumed that if current market price of the share is equal to this much current market price will be given for you right if current market price of the share is equal to this much if dividend for several number of years is equal to this much and of course if g or growth in the dividend is also equal to this much how to find out cost of equity of course cost of equity will not be given in the question but you have to use it from the trial and error method how you can use from trial and error method trial and error method says that if this side of the equation of course both sides should be equal if this side of the equation is for example equal to 150 right so definitely this side of the equation also should be equal to 150 so here we need to put a value for the cost of equity or ke we need to put a value for cost of equity in order to equalize both sides for example we have a question and we put 10 percentage then we when we calculate the cost 
This side is equal to, for example, 160. If it is 160, it is more than this one. So you have to increase the rate. For example, previously it was equal to 10 percentage. If you found it, for example, as 160, then you increase it, for example, 10.5 or, for example, Halen percentage. If you find, for example, the value, if you apply 10 percentage and you found the value, for example, as 130, in this case, you have to reduce the rate. For example, you can reduce the rate to equal to how many percentage? 9 percentage. Until to both sides be equal, you have to apply different rate. That is why it is called trial and error method. You have to apply different rate in the formula until both sides become equal. Any rate which equalizes these two sides, basically that one can be called as can be called as cost of equity. This is a little bit time consuming. You have to apply it. So put the value in the formula, then apply different rate. Assume 10 percentage. If 10 percentage make equal both side mid equal the both side it means the cost of equity is 10 if it is for example more or less then you have to apply if this side is more then then increase the cost increase the ke otherwise if this side is less then you have to reduce this one right so in this way we can apply the formula how to calculate the cost of equity so please watch the next video in order to see how to calculate the cost of equity under a different group